Hi, everyone. I'm Tom Hansen. Thank you so much for joining us. President Trump is threatening to derail the bipartisan $900 billion coronavirus stimulus deal at the last minute. In a video posted on Twitter Tuesday night, he demanded Congress renegotiate the package to include $2,000 direct payments. That would be up from $600. The president was largely absent from negotiations. And the person who proposed a $600 payment? Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, who negotiated on the White House's behalf. Meanwhile, Mr. Trump is also issuing clemency to several close allies, among them two individuals charged in the Mueller report, three former Republican members of Congress, and war criminals who killed Iraqi civilians. CBS News national correspondent Chip Reed has the latest from Washington. It really is a disgrace. In a surprise move, President Trump last night demanded that Congress revise the $900 billion COVID relief legislation that was passed just days ago. I'm asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. It was Republicans, not Democrats, who were mostly opposed to higher stimulus payments. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeted last night, At last, the president has agreed to $2,000. Democrats are ready to bring this to the floor this week by unanimous consent. The president also railed against what he said were unrelated provisions in the legislation. $505 million to Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama. Most of those provisions were in a separate government funding bill passed jointly with the COVID relief legislation. The president's announcement was met with concerns from both sides of the aisle. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted, the COVID-19 package, while imperfect, will save jobs and lives. While Democrat Mark Warner asked, does the president realize that unemployment benefits expire the day after Christmas? We won by a landslide. The president the also released weeks, a second video last night in which he railed against the election results and brought up unfounded claims of fraud. Both Not of the president's videos were posted just minutes after the White House announced a controversial wave of pardons. Among them, George Papadopoulos, a Trump 2016 campaign advisor who was convicted of lying to authorities as part of an investigation into Russian election interference, and Alex Vanderswan, a lawyer also convicted of lying during the Russia probe. People who lied to cover up for themselves or for the president, they get a pardon. Uh, you know, it's just another body blow against the rule of law in this country. The president also granted clemency to three former Republican congressmen, Duncan Hunter, Chris Collins, and Steve Stockman, all of whom were convicted of separate financial crimes. He is trying to burn the House of Justice down on his way out the door. This news national correspondent Chip Reed is at the White House. Chip, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, what do we know about why President Trump pursued these pardons to former GOP members of Congress and people convicted in the Mueller probe? Is there a common thread here? Well, I think there is. Uh, by one study, according to one study, 88 percent of the people Trump has given pardons to so far in his presidency, and it's over 50 people. 88% of them have close personal or political relationships with Donald Trump. Uh, other presidents have given pardons and even controversial pardons, but I don't think any other president comes close to that number of almost 90% of them had a close personal or political relationship with the president. And of these three members of Congress, two of them were two of the first supporters of Donald Trump back when he first decided to run for president. Uh, and the third, uh, Steve Stockman, uh, had a huge lobbying effort uh, on his behalf by people who are close to the president. Uh, and as for the other two, uh, the two people who were involved, George Papadopoulos, for example, who was involved in the Russia investigation, the president has made, made very clear that he wants to give pardons to people who were involved in that investigation and who were convicted, because that will help erase the taint that he has over the Russia investigation. Uh, he thinks that uh, apparently he believes that by giving pardons to people who are involved in it, that will help convince people that it was nothing that should have ever been pursued in the first place. Yeah, certainly all of these people have given unwavering support to the president exactly. and been very outspoken about it. Now, Mr. Trump also granted clemency to four men convicted of killing Iraqi civilians who worked for the military contractor Blackwater. Uh, a really horif horrific tragedy there. Remind us of what happened in this incident and why this was an issue of importance to the president. 
Yeah, well, it was in downtown um, Baghdad uh, at a very prominent square there. It was a, it's a very crowded, chaotic area. Uh, and these uh, four uh, Blackwater security guards, pri a private firm, were guiding some embassy, U.S. Embassy employees through that crowded area. Uh, and there are a lot of different stories, but eventually uh, prosecutors argued and succeeded, uh, got guilty pleas, not guilty pleas, excuse me, guilty verdicts, uh, that uh, the Blackwater security guards had just fired wildly uh, after initially killing a, the driver of a car who they argued they thought was heading toward them with a bomb in his car. Chaotic situation, but it took years. They finally got the prosecution. But a key thing to understand about this is that Blackwater was founded by Eric Prince. Eric Prince is a very close supporter and and uh, and somebody who has worked with the president on many things. And his sister is Betsy DeVos, the president's secretary of education. So again, it's that it's that combination of a, an issue that gets the president's attention because of lobbying and also people the president has political and personal connections with. The details of that massacre are just horrific, including the they death are. of innocent civilians and, and children. Uh, we yeah, should two know. children, eight, yeah. eight and 11 years old. Incredibly sad. Now, I, changing gears here, we heard some of President Trump's objections to the coronavirus stimulus bill, but it was his Treasury Secretary. Secretary Steve Mnuchin, who proposed the $600 direct payments. Is there a serious threat of him not signing it? And if he doesn't, do we have any indication whether a Republican-led Senate will consider $2,000 stimulus checks? We really don't know because the White House is not saying, but the thinking in Washington is right now that this is basically bluster coming from President Trump. Uh, because certainly there are the votes there to override his veto if he were to do that. Uh, it is something that is, uh, in the eyes of Congress, all wrapped up. They took months to negotiate this deal, and the president was basically absent from the negotiations. He had almost nothing to do with it because he was fixated uh, on, on his continuing effort to overturn the election. So after everything is done and they're just waiting for his signature, he does this, it would be hard to imagine that Congress would go along with this. The Democrats are jumping on it now because they always wanted $2,000 in the stimulus payments, not $600. Uh, the administration did not, the Republicans did not, and it's hard to imagine that the Republicans would open this bill up again, jeopardize the entire thing, because uh, the government uh, could go into a partial shutdown on January, on, excuse me, December 28th, uh, if they don't get this done quickly. And if they open it up again, it's going to take some time. So uh, I think the thinking in Washington is right now that this is the president venting his rage and will probably at some point uh, relent and either sign it or allow it to become law without signing it. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a critical time right now. And we should also note that unemployment benefits run out on the 26th, in addition to the government funding running out That's on the right. 28th. Uh, you know, and so many Americans caught in the middle of this That's in right. desperate need of that money. Chip Reed, thank you so much. You bet.